Hello everyone and welcome. I do not have an intro but I have a brand new video for you and in this episode we are adding the links to our cult climate zoo that is a zoo that you guessed it is located in a colder climate. Um, it is also located alongside a river that has kind of a rocky cliff like edge to it which I think looks really cool. So there's a lot of gray tones in here because we have a lot of gray stones. Um, and that is kind of the vibe of this. The buildings are going to be very modern. So that is what this zoo is going for. And obviously being set in a colder climate, I wanted animals that could live through a couple of days of snow. So, um, yeah, I mean, this park isn't really in an area that would constantly be below zero Celsius, but it definitely could be in the winter for multiple days at a time. And I wanted animals that, you know, could comfortably live through that. And I think the lynx just really fits the bill. It's not a too exciting animal um, overall, I think. I mean, maybe it is for some of you guys and good for you, but <laughs> I think overall this is not like, um, such an exciting animal and that is good because it's fairly close to the entrance you kind of see it when the camera turns so this is really one of the first animals that you were going to see I also think that lynx in particular often have a very similar enclosure like you don't see a lot of variety in real life zoos with the lynx they usually have a cage that is kind of like an aviary but obviously without the birds but with the lynx and uh, that is usually how they are kept in zoos so I kind of wanted to keep that but I wanted to I obviously thought like how do I make this very modern because the zoo is very modern how do I modernize this idea of like a cage and I got a came up with the idea of kind of like tilting it over and I still think that looks cool from the side but the size really messed with it and also the other idea was that it is kind of coming out of this like hillside um, or like the side of this like hill or mountain or whatever you want to call it and the back of this mountain actually faces the river that I was talking about so I think the back looks really good, which we will get to in a later episode, not in this one. Um, but I think it is technically what I envisioned, but it doesn't look the way that I thought it would. And it definitely doesn't look that modern to me. But that being said, I'm still very happy with the shelter uh, that I built for this, just because um, I think it looks kind of realistic that it's not like too big to amazing and modern because it's not really um the visitors can get to it so like i said in the badger episode they would not put the most money into these enclosures like they need to be able to do what they need to be doing is housing the animals and um, being functional for the staff but they would not make them beautiful if they are not um right there in the eyes of the visitors so i think i achieved that um, I really like this and yeah, I think that it does the job. <laughs> and the other thing that I really like about this, and this is actually way more important and it's the reason that I kept it, even though it's not 100% what I was planning to do. Um, I really think that because this is early on in a zoo, like you enter it and this would be one of the first animals that you would see if you were going to the right once you enter the park so walking to the right entering the park this would be actually the second animal that you would be seeing i'm not sure if i might squeeze in another animal before that but as of right now that would be the second animal after the badger that you would see walking into the zoo so uh i i think it kind of because of this like tilted position and then i did a lot of work on this big path later on uh, which I'm not going to show you in the video because it's literally just like decoration and while I think the decoration looks really good it it would have been it would have taken way too long to show you this so um I left it out <laughs> and uh but I think together with the tilted position and um the decoration on the path I think it really like immerses you into this like zoo like it really welcomes you and you're like right there in the nature and this is actually also something that i really like about how this um enclosure turned out even though it does look 
fairly unrealistic, I think. Um, it is kind of cool that it's almost, um, almost like a view into a natural world like a natural habitat for this animal and not like a man-made back wall to it, which is what I wanted. Like that was what I planned and I thought it would mo look more realistic, but it doesn't, but I'm fine with it because I still like it. Um, so that's all that counts. And I think it is really cool. And I I'll, actually, I really like about this that with this like hillside, the lynx are actually able to climb up onto different levels within the hills. And there's a, there is like, um, what would you call it? Like a little caves that they can go into and sleep in. So they don't actually have to go into the indoor section that their exhibit obviously has, but they don't have to. They can sleep in these like little um caves in the mountains which is really cool uh the visitors can't really see it but i mean i can see it and i think it's cool so um i'm really happy with this uh which is not entirely something i planned it just like kind of happened when i was building actually i think i just placed the bet somewhere and suddenly i was like oh well it messed with the terrain but I can, I can work with that. <laughs> so um, that's kind of how these caves came about. You can see them right now, I think. Um, and yeah. In a moment there, we are going to be starting out with their indoor section. Um, and the way that this indoor section works is the lynx will enter it from a higher level of this little like hillside. So like I already said, they can walk across these little like levels. Um, and the level that they enter their uh, indoor section from is actually higher than the ground of the indoor section. Can you still follow me? So they are sort of in the hills entering into the building and then within the building they can come down to ground level again. So uh, I hope that you'll be able to see it in the video. I know it's sped up and everything, but I don't think that my explanation made that much sense. So <laughs> I hope you'll be able to see it, but there's also a shot of it in the cinematics. Um, but yeah, I just I just wanted to mention it because I think it, it actually works out kind of cool. Um, and um, I don't know, it, it looks kind of like private, like they have this private little entrance that isn't like just a doorway and if they can actually use it, which I was quite surprised with, with the traversal traversable area and everything. So they can actually fit through it because I think right now there's still this like fairly big hole, but we will make this two little ones. So, and they can still pass through, which is great. Um, and um, yeah, they, they actually enter, they sit on a little bit of a box uh, that they can also sleep in and with a little bit of a ramp so they can get up it, which I realized they did not need because the lings jump like crazy. Um, but you know, it, it still works like that. So that's good. Um, so I think right now you can t see fairly good what I mean. Like they are in this like upper level when they want to enter their little indoor section. And like I also said, the indoor section, I think the building looks really realistic in the end um, because it's not, it's not too crazy amazing. And we also place a huge billboard in front of it. So I think this kind of distract, I can't say it, distracts the eye from this like very, boring building, um, which is intentionally kept boring, obviously, but, um, yeah, this is, uh, that's what that is, and, uh, but I think in the end, I really, really like it because it is so simple, and also, uh, in the cinematics, you will see that I will, con I have already continued far beyond, um, what you see in this video, so, actually, this indoor section shares its stables with another species not directly but it's the same building and with this addition that i make later on it really ties all of it together um really makes it a nice uh, little staff path that goes there so absolutely like how it looks in the end obviously you aren't going to be seeing it in this episode but like i already said i i build um 
I built a lot of it already uh, ahead of time because this is still stuff that I recorded when I still wasn't sure if recording was fun. And so far, actually, it is a lot of fun to me to record. I'm still really, really struggling with the voiceovers in, ca in case you can't tell. Um, <laughs> Uh, they they really make me quite nervous, and I hope they're not too awkward and too weird and ininformative. But I'm really trying, so um, yeah. Unfortunately, the links clips through this very section. Um, I actually took a really stupid screenshot of it. Um, it looks like it's stuck in the fence. Um, but yeah, I mean that just, that just happens. It's not bad because they can't escape from it. They just Lillary can clip from one of these indoor cages into the other, which in a real life zoo would really suck because obviously those things would be used to separate them, but you know, in the game it doesn't really matter. Um, and yeah, you see me struggle with the door right there, uh, but I fix it. Um, also, because this is pre recorded a long time ago, or not a long time ago, but some time ago, there will not be any of the new objects that come with the conservation pack. Obviously, by the time that this will come out and the time that I'm talking about it, the conversation... Con I said conversation pack again. The conservation pack will be out or is out, but not at the time of building this. I think I will go through this um, and a lot of other things and add a lot of the um, the new pieces later on because they are so essential. All these backstage pieces are chef's kiss. Really, really been waiting for them, so I probably will go through a lot of old stuff and add them. I mean, there's not that much old stuff that you will see, but I still have old zoos, you know? So, <laughs> um, that's about that. Uh, I didn't really use any of the new pieces um, but this because we already kind of talked about the future this gives us another chance to talk about the future so like I said um, I've already recorded more of this so I already know what's going to be next this time I'm not going to be telling you but um, I also already know what I kind of have planned so the idea for this park going forward like this is still very vague intentionally but um, as you walk through the park, as you go through it, you will kind of, it, the park kind of climbs up a mountain, right? So there will be a ride included in this, you can kind of guess what it is, um, and we will have a station, but that will be when you enter and you go to the left. So right now we are working on the right side of the park, and the left side of the park there will be viewing for sea lions because I already said um, the sea lions are probably going to be swimming in mostly the entire river which I know is unrealistic but I just really like that idea so um, there will be a viewing for that on the left side and there will be a station I don't know about more animals probably but um, that's the general idea and the station will take you up the up the mountain, but you can also walk up the mountain, which is what you do when you walk through the left side. So there's a lot of animals that will kind of have their exhibits um, climb up alongside the visitors and kind of go into the mountains um, and build. Maybe some animals will live in a valley. This is something that I've planned and some will live on the water side, which is also something that I've planned. So, I mean, I don't think you can guess the animals from what I just said, but that's what I've planned. And um, overall, like in the end, whether you take the right up the mountain or you walk up the mountain, um, those two paths will meet and I don't I'm not sure if there will be a path back down so you don't have to take the right um, or walk the same way twice I'm not sure about that yet um, but maybe I think this is something that is is way too far ahead <laughs> to plan I mean plans change all the time and even though I'm a big planner I always like draw a map of everything that I'm planning to do these things always change because exhibits are bigger or smaller than you expect them to be um, and you really, really see what 
like how things will be once you start building. Um, so all the plans, uh, I have to be remind myself to be flexible with them. Uh, so I can't plan so far ahead, but I would like to, <laughs> let's be real. Um, but I really love making these plans because they keep me so excited and motivated to actually build. Um, which is something that I usually struggle with. Usually I'm like, okay, I want to plan all of it and do nothing. But with this game, like actually doing it is just as much fun as uh, planning it. So that's why I'm so, so, so motivated for this game always. <laughs> so really love it. Um, so I think that was all that I can really tell you about for the future of this park. It's not all I can tell you, but like I said, these plans are probably going to change anyway, so I don't want to, you know, go too far into them, uh, but they are in my head. Um, but I wanted to talk about the links, just uh, I'm not going to be as amazing as Savannah and give you all this crazy information about animals. Uh, I just want to say that I really, really like the links and it's almost kind of like a nostalgic like childhood thing for me because in Germany we have a lot of like parks that have like native wildlife, I guess, and they always have the links. And while the lynx isn't the most exciting animal, it is one of very, very few carnivores that you would see at these parks. So it will usually be like wolves and lynx, right? Um, and so it would always be like kind of exciting to see the links. And also the other thing is um, my dad really likes them. So I kind of, whenever I think of links, I remember that my dad would be excited about them, which is obviously like a good memory, obviously, right? Um, I know that my dad really likes them and really thinks they are so cute because they have these like fluffy little ears, right? Um, so yeah, I always have a good memory of the links because I know my dad gets excited about it, which is so cute and I really like that. Also, taking the screenshots for these guys was so much fun because they jump so much. It's so crazy. <laughs> like, they can jump and sometimes I would be like, oh, it's jumping you know, this is going to look so cool and then it would like totally clip and they land at a crazy distance. But it was it was so much fun. And I've gotten a lot of cool screenshots that, um, I mean, I'm currently not really using them. I'm planning on using them for Instagram, but uh, I, I like taking screenshots in general, but there's a lot of cool ones of them jumping. So uh, really excited for that and actually, um, I took notes for this voiceover because I don't know if you've noticed or if I've said it a million thousand times, but I'm really struggling with the voiceovers, really struggling with what to say. I have to, to restart a lot. I have to take a lot of breaks and think like, what can I say? So I actually started um, taking notes, like opening a Word document, writing down what I want to say, kind of giving it a structure so that I have something to quickly look at and remind myself what I wanted to talk about. So um, I have this and as I was writing this, I was like, oh, the screenshots were fun. I can talk about the screenshots. And I have this bullet point that just says, uh, links jump a lot and I made a smiley. And then I realized that um, Word can actually, they can make a like a, a graphic smiley out of a typed smiley, which I did not know. And it makes me so happy. It looks so cute. Um, so yeah, very random. Never made a smiley in Word, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit of a smiley face because I just thought it was kind of funny that this this very serious bullet point just says, J links jump a lot. Um, so yeah, I literally typed a smiley about that. And um, yeah, something else that I wanted to talk about <laughs> that uh, actually I did not put in my work document, so totally freestyle. I mean, everything is freestyle. I, I'm not like writing down actual words. It's just like bullet points to remind myself. But something else that I wanted to talk about um, is the little pond that they have in their enclosure. Because my idea for this was, uh, because it was like, okay, do I put a drain in? But it's it's in this like little corner and it almost is like a little bit of a, a pit, a little bit of a um, stone, like gravel pit. 
and I really like that and I uh, figured maybe this is just like a corner of the exhibit where the water collects when it rains so this is not really like wanted by the zoo it just kind of happens uh, or happened and maybe this is like a corner where the lings would like dig in the ground and so it's like lower like something like this and obviously the water would collect because uh, of the um, cement barrier that is going around it so that was kind of the idea of it that's why I didn't give it a drain it's why I didn't um, it it didn't uh, it's not man-made it's just like a little bit of a um, just the water collects there I guess I'm really I can't think of the English word right now like puddle a puddle that is what I was thinking about um, it's 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 more like a, a big puddle and the lynx don't swim so it doesn't really matter uh, that they don't have regular water however it was handy because I didn't have to put in um, the ugly like uh, drinking options that it has if you don't have a body of water um, so that was handy but, uh, and it's kind of the reason why I did it uh, in the first place before I noticed that it kind of looks like it collected there like the water collected naturally so um, yeah I actually really like this uh, this um, what's it called the tree trunk that you can see right now I really like it I put in um, uh, the the pieces of the climbing set because uh, I noticed that even though a lot of the objects are climbable in the game the animals will climb it smoother if you put in the actual climbing pieces like they can then walk over the climbing pieces uh, and it did work I've seen the links actually walk over it unfortunately the footage was lagging really really much so I couldn't put it in but they do walk over it and I really like it and I also really like the stones in the background that are um, uh, kind of almost like a little bit of a of a ravine <laughs> underneath it so it actually there is something that the links is crossing when it walks over this so I really like that um, and yeah I think right now we are almost at the end we are finishing up some indoor stuff again without the new indoor or backstage pieces that came with the pack uh, the <sighs> it's not the conversation pack it's the conservation pack um, but yeah I, it, it's without these pieces uh, just to remind you because this was filmed way ahead of time but I do really like what I did there um, this was mainly just because I had this weird corner uh, that I wasn't planning on using any other way and also because I realized that it looked best when the shutters for these little entrances into the indoor area for the animals if they were on the outside which obviously made me think okay I will have to incorporate like a, a, like an electric system that made it make sense that they could uh, um, close the shutters from within it uh, so that's why I made this a little bit of a thing it, it's it's not that prominent but I just I just thought I would do it I never done something like that um, and yeah like I said the indoor area is kind of boring um, but we will spice them up with the new pieces I'm sure of it and you can also kind of see in this footage that there's already a plan to have another animal uh, be their neighbor um, <laughs> uh, they would not like to be their neighbor and they can't see each other uh, but they share the same building I guess and the keepers share the same entrance to it which I hope wouldn't be too stressful to the uh, other animal that is also in this stable so I think we are already at the finishing touches we are um, finishing up with this like billboard section and in the screenshots you're going to see that this entire area is already fleshed out um, I've not yet uh, edited the video of the other animal but you may potentially see me uh, work more on this area or maybe not but uh, I mean at some point we will make a tour and then you will see everything in great detail here um, but yeah I, I just think because these enclosures are fairly big they're somewhat spaced out more 
um, and all of the stuff in between. I mean, let me know if you want me to keep them in, but I think these videos are already very, very long and I think that you can take these things in better within a zoo tour rather than watching them sped up and it's like kind of not even really part of the exhibit and everything. Um, so that's why I cut them out. But I mean, if you want to see them, feel very, very free to let me know. However, we are almost at the end of this speed build and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you are excited for the cinematics because they are just around the corner. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'd be very excited to see you around in another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye!